Welcome to episode 85 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. In this episode, I deviate from my discussion with Tub on 25 issues and my new series, Dad Talk. Instead, I've invited Justin Cornett on to speak with me about his organization, For All Tennessee. For All Tennessee is an organization with the mission of influencing legislation in Tennessee. After getting to know a little bit about Justin on the phone, I was excited to have this conversation. And with that, let's dive in and hear what he has to say. All right, Justin, thank you for joining. So we are talking with Justin Cornett, and we're going to be talking about his organization called For All Tennessee. Is that correct? For All Tennessee? I'm looking at the web address. Yes, sir. That is correct. All right. Awesome. Thank you for being on, Justin. And Thanks, let's sir. get first things first. Let's tell me a little bit about you. So, so <laughs> tell me most, something. Oh, tell me something interesting. Whatever it is, it's interesting. You know that, and, and we'll get into the history of your organization in just a moment, so you don't have to worry about that. But just a little bit about you. you know, it doesn't have to be long. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's just probably the most boring part of the whole conversation. I'm, uh, I'm just a regular guy. Um, I, you know, nothing special, sales background, a lot of interest in politics, a lot of volunteer work that over the years, uh, some has been more fruitful than others. And uh, I'm happy about this new project that we've launched and uh, really think that we might be able to have a real impact on American politics in general. Um, if, we, if we can get this off the ground and do it right, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's got real potential to have a real impact. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. Anything else about you that we need to know, or is or is that that's that's it? We don't want to put out too much. My birthday was yesterday. Oh well, happy birthday! That is super fabulous. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yesterday? Yeah. Are yeah. you joking? Oh, no. Christmas Day. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And also, um, you know, a little unfortunate because that means it's... you get Christmas gifts and your birthday gifts all at once. And there's mm -hmm. no, mine's in June. So, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, At, yeah no, yeah. Christmas birthday is awful because everybody's out with their own family. So, you know, I've had one birthday party in my whole life, and mm -hmm. wow. you often get a gift that is Christmas and birthday. And, uh, you know, you basically right. get robbed your whole life, but say love you. <laughs> gotcha. I hear you. All right. Well, let's not dwell on that too much, and we'll dive right in. And let, tell me a little bit about, for all Tennessee, like how it got started, the motivation, you know, th those kind of things. Cause, you know, I, the conversation that we had on the phone the other day, you know, it was kind of interesting. And so let's just yeah. let's dig in and let's hear what's going on. Yeah, sure, man. Uh, so it, it's really the product of trying to answer the question who works for the regular guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are lobbyists that make lots of money to work for companies and corporations and parties and special interests of all sorts, businesses, whatever. Um, but who is really going there and asking legislators to push things that benefit regular folks? Um, and realistically, the answer is nobody. I mean, mm -hmm. theoretically, our legislators are supposed to be the people there, but our legislators, realistically speaking, are consumed by getting reelected and mm -hmm. that means making friends with groups that can help finance your campaign so um there's less motivation to do that there so <clears throat> we we put something we put together what we call the democratization of a 501c4 mm -hmm. uh, and the idea is to uh, facilitate small donors being able to um, have their ideas and things that affect their lives pushed and while we ignore or, you know, don't, while we're not focused on um, a lot of issues that are divisive mm -hmm. or particularly benefit one group over another group or any of those things. I mean, there are a lot of things out there, um, you know, ballot access measures, uh, property rights measures, criminal justice reform, um, the legislative process and how government functions. I mean, mm -hmm. there's lots of different things out there that you can find a lot of agreement on. Mm -hmm. 
and that's what we're trying to do. So <clears throat> we created something where membership gets to vote um, on our agenda and I, whatever they vote for becomes the short list. And then it's, uh, you know, us trimming what they give us based off of our ability, you know, the number of bills that we can feasibly work and the things that uh, we have a legitimate shot at getting passed or a legitimate shot at getting a conversation that matters started. Right. Uh, so <clears throat> um, we had some success last year in our first uh, uh, session. Um we got uh, three out of 12 pieces of legislation uh, passed, um, including legislation that um, helped move civil asset forfeiture in a good direction. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are on the eliminate or limit civil asset forfeiture in, mm -hmm. um, we got a bill that uh, protects small businesses from being labeled as essential or non-essential. Um, okay. by and now cities and counties can no longer label businesses essential or non-essential. The only person in the state that can is the governor. And originally the bill was worded to include the governor as well, but the governor wouldn't sign the bill. So we amended it and took what we could get. Gotcha. Um, uh, and uh, the last one we got through was um, arguably the strongest police reform bill that's been passed in the wake of everything being on fire for, you know, a year or so. Um, a year before last, I guess now. Um, <clears throat> in Tennessee, we ended no-knock raids. We got de-escalation training. We got duty to intervene, duty to report, um, shooting at moving vehicles, chokeholds. I mean, you name it. It was all addressed in the bill. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, really proud of that. Uh, those accomplishments in that first year, and we really think we're going to have a much bigger impact this year. I think we'll be able to get a, a, a probably twice as many bills through. Gotcha. So how does that process work? Like, do you have, when I say the process, I mean, I'm talking about the members deciding what direction that you're going to go. Do, do the members like email them? Do you have like meetings? Uh, you know, like, like how is it, like, if I were a member, and I said, man, I'd really like to see this happen, like, you know, whatever this is. What would that process look like? Sure. Yeah. And no, I mean, we do meetings all over the state. Um, we are very easy to interact with on mm -hmm. social media and through email uh, on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, and because we're genuinely interested in other people's thoughts and ideas. Um, I mean, I've been around the legislature in a number of capacities for I don't know, half dozen years or so. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm probably still a novice when it, when you really want to get down to it, but at the same time, I can hold my own. I know a handful of uh, sections of policy and code pretty well, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, but I can't be an expert on everything. Uh, Tennessee's code has 41,675 pages in it. Right. Uh, nobody can be an expert on that. Right. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, we, we're, we're trying to be a facilitator. For example, I had, <clears throat> we've had three major pieces of legislation that we're probably going to end up working this session mm -hmm. uh, brought to us from people that we didn't know that heard about the organization, asked us if we would have interest in it and it fits in the wheelhouse. So we'll put that out there. Um, but I, one of them is a bill about um, property rights as it pertains to Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they've got a lot more leeway uh, to get onto your property without a warrant than other agencies in the state do. Mm -hmm. um, it addresses that. Um, we have one that is um, around eminent domain, <clears throat> which is a really good bill that was brought to us by a Republican uh, GOP chairman, a county chairman. Uh, and uh, I had a bail bondsman um, call me up and tell me that he felt bad in a particular situation where he's able to double dip because of the way the system works mm -hmm. uh, and suggested that we uh, try to address that. Um, and, you know, 
I'm, I, I want to have those conversations because these people have specific knowledge that I don't have. Right. Uh, and the kind of stuff that we're looking for is that kind of interaction from the public. So it's, it's not hard to get to us and okay. have a conversation with us about what it is that's important to you for sure. Right. So how do you identify, I, I assume that you're getting a lot of requests in a lot of different areas. So how do you kind of narrow that down and say, these are the things that we're going to focus on? Um, well, as a, you know, like, how do you determine what's going to get your attention, basically? Sure. Uh, well, what we did was we came up with a list of things uh, ourselves that uh, were items that fit in the wheelhouse. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the mission statement is working policy that empowers people or limits government and key does not do it on the back of taxpayers. OK, OK, so. Um, we put a list together that had, I don't know, 28, 33, somewhere around in there items. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people that would bring us stuff would bring us stuff that was already on that list. Um, we probably had a half dozen items brought to our attention that really fit in the wheelhouse that okay. were not already on that list. And next year we'll have any of these things that don't get through and whatever somebody else brings us on top, you know, to add to it next year. So we're essentially, we're just building a library of mm -hmm. ideas that work. Um, and the way it works for the members, I guess, um, is over the last couple months, month and a half, I mm -hmm. guess, um, really we've been putting out um, an, an issue each day um, okay. during the week. Um, and, you know, just covering one topic and it's, uh, you know, this is the problem in this state, or this is the issue in this state should for all Tennessee work legislation that would fix that problem by doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's how all of our posts have been. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to feed the public and our members, this information, because a lot of these things, you know, people don't know a lot about. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that civil asset forfeiture means a cop can take your stuff without charging you with a crime. Right. That's right. exactly right. what it is. But a lot of people don't understand that. You explain mm -hmm. it to them and all of a sudden they're incensed and they want to get it right. fixed. You know, uh, and, and all of a lot of these things are like that. You know, mm -hmm. some of them people recognize and some of them people don't. Some, you know, that bail bond issue, what that is, is if you are released and you're on probation, okay, and you commit some offense, mm -hmm. unrelated mm -hmm. offense, and you are rearrested, what happens is you go to jail and you bond out. And then two days later, your probation officer catches wind of the fact that you got arrested and he violates your probation and you're rearrested. Often hmm. when you're at work, often causing you problems in your life, you know, could cause you to lose your job, things like that. When the reality is, is the probation should be violated at the same time of the first arrest. Um, it, it, it's not a big, it, it should, it's not a controversial thing, but you know, you say bail bond reform and there's a group of people out there that freak out and are like, no, you can't let prisoners out, you know? And then when you explain the issue to them, they go, Oh yeah, that makes total sense. Right. Can't understand why it would be this way in the first place. Uh, so, you know, we've got a lot of those things. Again, we try to do, you know, 10 or so at a time and mm -hmm. then run a survey and ask everybody what their top three is, try to get people engaging in it. And we, they're non-binding things because a lot of these people aren't members, but they do inform us. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they, they sit there in the back of our mind and we know which one's got the most attention from the general public and stuff mm -hmm. and way that, uh, so, um, but we're about to run through the last of our issues um, and we'll probably get through them uh, by the end of this week or maybe the very beginning of next week. Uh, and we'll be talking about our ballot um, and how that goes. And if you're a member, which means that you give us 60 bucks in a calendar year, five bucks a month, okay. uh, and then you get a ballot in your email and it'll have all of these items on it. And oh. it's, it's really as simple as, yes, I think you should work this or no, I don't think you should work this on every one of them. Uh, and if 
51% of the members right, say they want us to work something, mm -hmm. it gets added to the short list. If, oh, uh, okay. It, right. So if they hand us 20 different items and we've got the capacity to work 12 or 15, then, you know, we'll try to combine them and get as many of them in one committee as we can so that we can take all these and it's, we're com consolidating the work kind of mm -hmm. thing in order to get as many of the issues as we can and, you know, trim the things that are outliers that cause, cause us to have to go to another committee and talk to 30 other people over one bill kind of thing or something like that. Less viable stuff, stuff that's, you know, we know is going to get killed. Um, you know, we may not, we may end up trying to not spend our time on it, but you know, a lot of these, we haven't had conversations with a, a lot of the legislators on it. Mm -hmm. um, I have had conversations with a number of legislators on, about our list. Um, okay. I talked to, um, in one week, I talked to um, two Republicans in the House, two senators uh, that are Republicans, and two Democrats that are in the state house, uh, all in one week. And I challenged them to find five things out of 30 or so that they didn't like and none of them none of them hmm. house democrat republican could not find five things that they didn't like so um i think there's a lot of power in the approach that we're taking in the kind of bills that we're we're trying to aim at um, gotcha staying so, above prey kind of thing is it fair to say then that you're pretty well received by the legislators um they don't know us well enough yet okay is what i say there um but i i'll give you an example of I mean, they will find it they will find that to right. be the case um a but they're not familiar with this yet so a lot of organizations uh, in this space nonprofit organizations uh, in politics in some way um <clears throat> do a scorecard OK, okay. where they score legislators based off of their votes. Right now, the problem with that is nine times out of 10, eight people in the legislature vote on something like this in a subcommittee and it's voted down and you never have any idea where the where everybody else stands, including your legislator, if it's your if it's an important issue. OK, so what we do is a report card where we're having conversations with the legislators about these issues and we're asking them, do you support this issue? Do you lean this way? Do you not know you need to do a little bit more homework? Do you not really like this issue or are you hard against it? You know, any of those things. And we put that stuff out there. Every time we have a conversation with them, we try to talk to them about all these different issues. So we can put all that information out there. So you know where your legislator stands on all of our issues, whether mm -hmm. they're coming before their committee or not. Right. Um, I, but last year we were building this report card out, like, you know, building the code out. Right. Um, but we were still running around and having conversations with legislators telling them this is what we were doing. We weren't posting any of that stuff yet. So when that thing went live, I immediately took business cards and wrote down for altn.org slash report card and you know, went to all the offices for all of these legislators that I had already talked to and say, hey, we just launched this. Please go look up your name and make sure that we're reporting your your positions correctly and mm -hmm. if we're not just let us know and you would not believe the number of legislators that called me up to say thank you for changing this or ask me to change something and thank me for changing mm -hmm. it or when i handed them the card we're like wait you want me to do what because these people expect you to want to trap your enemy in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Right. Um, and that's not what we want to do. We want to legitimately report the facts right. and think the facts are going to be on our side and we can win just by telling the truth. Mm -hmm. um, so these guys, it, it caught a lot of them off guard when I was like, no, I'm not trying to trap you. If there is something you see that you, you think I need to change, just say so and I will right. fix it. And if it causes a problem for you, 
I will issue a statement. Like, you know, I don't mind that. I don't because right. it's not my position. I, I'm not trying to misconstrue what they say. Right. I, if, if, if they say one thing and do another, often people are going to start to catch on. I don't have to say anything, right. you know, or if they, you know, you, you, you see what I'm getting at. The facts right, are right. what matters. Well, it, it, it seems to me then that, um, that you have this opportunity to kind of come across as friendly. And, and I don't mean friendly in the sense that you're going to pander or any of that stuff, just friendly. Like, Hey, we are here to, our focus is to change laws for the better. Yeah not find gotchas, not embarrass you. So therefore, if something is inaccurate, we have no problem changing it because our goal is not you. Right, right. Our goal, okay, the the real overarching thing that For All Tennessee has the ability to fix. And like I say, let me preface this by saying, we are incorporated as for all incorporated. Mm -hmm. Tennessee is the chapter. Uh, and we hope to get this off the ground in Tennessee so that we can open this in other states and spread okay. this. Idea. Um, but the, the, the arguably the biggest problem in American politics is that every single piece of legislation that goes through the process uh, in order for it to become law has to be signed off on by the party in power, mm -hmm. by the party in power, not the legislators in power, not the constituents of that party, the party itself. If the party itself does not want that piece of legislation, it's almost impossible to make it get through. Right. The the parties are the gatekeepers on every single piece of policy that gets passed at city, county, state, federal levels. Okay. If we cannot figure out a way to apply pressure to the legislators outside, uh, without you know making the party do it for us. Mm -hmm. We cannot figure out how to do that. We will not survive as a country. Anybody that's ever read George Washington's farewell address uh, knows that he devoted a thousand words to factions and parties and how they will destroy this country. Right. Uh, and it reads like virtual prophecy right now. Mm -hmm. Literally mm -hmm. every symptom he said would happen is epidemic in our country right now. And right. it's because... They, the system has been so refined that the Democrat Party and the Republican Party, who control the butts in the seats uh, at the legislature at all levels, um, are ultimately the gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. We the people have to be able to apply pressure to our legislators without asking the gatekeepers approval. Right. So and, and that we want to fix. So then that, that brings me to an interesting question, I think. Um, how does, like, how, how do special interest and lobbyists and all that play a role? I know that's not what you do, but how do they play a role if maybe you have uh, uh, something that you want to advance, your organization does, and it's contrary to the special interest or to, um, you know, big, huge, you know, uh, uh, I drew, I've drawn a blank on the word that I want. Like when we were Lobbyist. running civil asset forfeiture uh, legislation last year and the Department of Safety was coming out and yelling at us. Or, mm -hmm. um, we were running ballot access last year and uh, they killed the bill even though we had the votes. I mean, is that the kind of stuff that you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, like, because, you know, we always hear about lobbyists and we always hear about special interest groups and stuff like that. Yeah, I am a lobbyist, so don't get me wrong. I'm okay. a red lobbyist okay fair enough I, I wasn't aware of that yeah. and yeah. okay so then you're just basically competing on the same territory as others or on the same level to some extent i mm -hmm. mean you know there's a there's a method of lobbying that goes on where you know there's money and favors and stuff that changes hand and uh you know who knows the technical ins and outs of that um i don't even know 
how to accomplish that as a lobbyist. Um, what I know is my goal isn't to get particular legislators uh, elected or unseated. Um, my goal is to get the constituents in a particular district uh, to um, pay enough attention to us and be invested in the issues that we have enough that they will contact that legislator and push on him regardless of who that who that person is him or her or what party or whatever okay uh, so um it, 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 i'm i'm not i want to be friends with these guys mm -hmm. in in a way that they can trust me to shoot them straight, mm -hmm. uh, to not misrepresent them, to not treat them unfairly, um, to work with them as a partner on legislation that we have in common, um, things like all those things. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I want that relationship built around. Okay. Um, but money is never, we'll never, our, this organization will never give a dime to a campaign under any circumstance. Gotcha. Okay, so I, I didn't realize that you were effectively, you were considered a lobbyist uh, group yeah. or organization. Um, yeah, so that, that's that, the and, primary function, really. And, and it was, you know, maybe it's my own ignorance, but I wasn't aware that there was much lobbying done that didn't include money in some way, right? Because oh, that, yeah, that's sure. what you generally hear in the media. And since I've never really researched it myself, well, I, I mean, just, that's that's what I've heard. That's all that I know. You know, we're supposed to have self-governance mm -hmm. in this country. Uh, I mean, that's the the core design of the Constitution is self-governance. Right. Um, and if you have a representative form of government, mm -hmm. um, it, it's 100 percent logical, natural and necessary for people to lobby uh, their representative for legislation that they would like to see passed. Um, the problem is, is not enough regular folks go and, and, and get involved in it. Um, and what happens is, is most of the people up there are paid by big moneyed interests of some sort. Um, and that's who the lobbyists there are working for. Mm -hmm. um, so we have this negative perception because, uh, because most of the lobbyists are paid by bad guys right. um, or, you know, self-interested people. Um, sure. So, but lobbying is a core function uh, in any representative form of government. It's absolutely a cornerstone and a necessity. The, the real problem is government's gotten out of control it, you know, it's no longer a limited government. Mm -hmm. uh, so the favors that can be handed out through law are pretty much unlimited. Um, and that's the, I think that's the real issue. I mean, but you're going to get me down a Wickard v. Philbin Supreme Court case in <laughs> right. a rabbit hole. And I, I sure, really no, we don't, we don't have to go into all the literate details, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it, that was that was good insight because, it, you know, hopefully other people um, are un unaware as well. And by listening, they would be enlightened or maybe yeah. I'm just the ignorant one. And that's fine. No, too. I, <laughs> no I mean, it, it's uh, it's totally fine. But yeah, the, the idea is to we want to be the organization that goes up there and asks the legislators to work for their constituents as opposed to everybody else. Gotcha. Uh, so again, we throw tons of issues out there. We ask the public what issues are important to them. If they bring us stuff and it fits, we put it out there and then we have a vote. And everybody that gives us money gets to steer the ship and whatever they vote for becomes the, the, the basis for the agenda for that session. So, um, you know, I, I, think that, I think that the real appeal to our organization is the culture in that we're not going to be sensationalists and we're not going to lean one party way or another mm -hmm. party way or any of that stuff. Um, you know, additionally, um, having the people that give us money steer the ship, 
mm-hmm. uh, I think is a novel idea. I mean, don't get me wrong. Coke brothers have lots of organizations out there and their money steers their ship. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, our organization, because we have the members vote on what policies we go forward with, I can't take, I can't, if a special interest group comes up, well, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, so the hemp lobby in Tennessee uh, brought me a bill on legalization of marijuana for this okay. following session okay um so they want me to go and work the bill and all that good stuff but if they were offering me a hundred thousand dollars i can't tell them yeah sure i'll just we'll work it Mm -hmm. because members have to sign off on it first so it it does the the structure of or our our organization doesn't really lend itself to having those big donors Mm -hmm. become the drivers of the organization. Um, we're much more interested in the Bernie model and having thousands of people right. uh, throwing five bucks a month at us. And right. uh, I think that's more impactful as well. Um, you know, you, Koch brothers have accomplished a lot. Um, George Soros has accomplished a lot. Don't get me wrong, but if you can really unify people um, and numbers uh, strength in numbers is going to win every time. Right. Is that something that you could incorporate into your model, though, where you say, all right, here are a list of issues and here's potential money that is involved in this. And then, like, let's say I'm a member and then I get that sheet in the mail and it says, mm-hmm. you know, the hemp lobby has, you know, promised, you know, I don't know, $100,000 toward this particular issue, here's what we'd be fighting or, you know, what we'd be fighting for. Is that something that could be or is incorporated in? Yes, that is 100% something that could be incorporated in. And it is something that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, We've had, we haven't had the ability to try to find those kind of lucrative partnerships just yet. Right. Um, We've been, I mean, the main focus has been putting together coalitions to lobby mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, trying to devise plans on certain issues and, you know, who's working what and all that different stuff. I mean, and we've talked to groups as diverse. Um, and there, and so there's a group that is so conservative that the Republican establishment in the state can't stand them. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know, there's a, a liberal group that is as liberal as liberals get, and they're both going to be partners with us. And in some cases on the same issues. Right. Uh, so it'll be interesting to try to navigate this. I mean, some of these people might not want to talk to each other or, you know, be working with each other. Right. you don't care. Uh, we'll keep them separated if that's what we need to do. We'll make sure everybody's aware of what's going on as best we can. And bottom line is, let's get the stuff done. You right. Know? So um, it, it's going to be interesting. I mean, we've got ACLU, Americans for Prosperity. We say hemp growers. We've got um, defense lobby or defense lawyers. I mean, we've got a lot of friends uh, that we've made in a very short period of time. And mm. uh, well, I, I think we're going to have a strong push on a lot of stuff that we're going to we'll we'll be able to carry this year do you ever kick issues to another organization and say hey you know what we don't have the capacity for this but this one seems to be pretty popular Uh, or Um, or maybe a directions per per se i don't know if necessarily we kick issues to other people i mean as i mentioned we're not going to get we're not going to touch some of these really controversial things. Mm -hmm. Um, We want to build coalitions of people across party lines. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't forget parties. I don't even know. I don't care what anybody's party is. Hey, I, 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 do you want to push in the same direction and let's get everybody that wants to push in the same direction, pushing. Right. Uh, So um, I totally forgot where I was going with this. Um, I, 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 so just to kind of you know illustrate what i'm getting at i was just thinking in terms of assume you know I, i'm just thinking but maybe your organization has a list of things and you're like all right here's our top five and you know you know 
as you start getting down the list, some of those items are less likely to be on your plate. And, yeah. you know, I could imagine a scenario where you might say, okay, number six quite didn't quite make it because we can only do the top five, just making up numbers here, but we can only do the top five. So let's take number six and, you know, members had specifically you know, mentioned something. So we're going to tell an organization that we know that's interested in this particular area. So maybe it's the hemp growers and you might yeah. say, Hey, this is, this is the yeah. feedback we're getting from our members that may or may not be communicating that information to you, you know, kind of like basically helping get them get a better idea of what the total community is interested in. Yeah. I, I I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very willing to try to sort people as necessary when it comes to things like that. Um, so the whole vaccine thing has been a thing, you know, um, mm -hmm. but a here it was settled in a special session and we didn't participate in that at all. Right. But we still have a lot of people calling up and asking us, you know, about vaccines or, you know, Hey, I'm having this issue at work with them trying to mandate and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Uh, and yeah, I, I absolutely would sort those people into other organizations that I knew were working those ideas. Gotcha. And if, if there was something that was brought to us that was outside of the wheelhouse per se, but had merit or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 absolutely I'm trying to help many hands make light work right you know? so if if we're all living in a world where we're all trying to help each other out and scratch each other's back and we're developing relationships over mm -hmm. organizations in that kind of way I, I think that that's going to make it a lot stronger as time moves on so gotcha. short answer is yeah absolutely we we would do that well, gotcha. I, I share well i like to share <laughs> sure, absolutely. Uh, so let's talk about some of these issues a little bit more. Uh, on sure. your website, uh, and I'm looking at it right now, it has, uh, you know, under the issues section, when you click on the um, the menu, it has ballot access, small business, and criminal justice. So just kind of walk through kind of like what you're, what you're aiming for for each one okay. of those in general. So uh, let me preface this by saying the stuff that's on there is going to change mm -hmm. in about two weeks, three weeks. Okay. Because, for the new year. Yeah, exactly. All that stuff's technically from last year. Okay. Uh, so, um, what we are, what we're looking at realistically, what we want to do is find places where people can agree, um, that they should be free to do something that they are not currently free to do, or that the government is doing something that it should not be doing. Okay. Uh, so, we're looking this issues list that we've got this year that we're going to vote on in like two weeks. If you're listening, become a member. Doesn't matter if you're in Tennessee or not, help us make it out of Tennessee. We can get down to Florida or wherever you are a lot faster. Uh, and you can totally vote. Um, it's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but the issues that we're looking at, I mean, we've got, cryptocurrency we've got jury nullification we've got a handful of different criminal justice reform things from bond reform and bail reform to alternatives to incarceration qualified immunity civil asset forfeiture um i mean criminal justice there's a lot of room in criminal justice and there's a, a lot of allies in criminal justice as okay. well uh, and the governor here in Tennessee is a Republican and an ally on criminal justice in large part. Okay. Uh, I, so we've we've asked about uh, decriminalization of marijuana. We've mm -hmm. asked about legalization of marijuana and medical marijuana as three separate issues that people would be able to weigh in on. Um, we have a bill that would end. Um, a requirement to have a primary in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that this, it, it's a dynamic here in Tennessee. Uh, we have a Republican supermajority. The Republicans are 
disappointed in our open primary process and they complain that Democrats cross over and elect rhinos uh, instead of our good good conservatives or whatever. Um, and their their reaction, their gut reaction is to close the primaries. Um, and I'm trying to present the idea of removing the primary requirement mm -hmm. as a better solution because any district would be able to then have a caucus or a, or a nominating convention where they could credential people at the door. Uh, so, you know, it, it didn't have to upset the entire apple cart. If there's one district where it's a real problem, then they could address it through a nominating convention kind of thing. And it would save taxpayer money in the meantime. Right. Um, so, you know, that's on there. Uh, we've got one that is about voice votes. Mm -hmm. so, um, so a ballot access bill that we had last year um, that's on the website that you're, you've got all the information on mm -hmm. that one. Right. We'll uh, put that in the show notes for people. Uh, it, 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 it's a good bill. So people who don't know, up until the 2020 election, uh, Tennessee had the third highest signature requirement mm -hmm. to qualify as a minor party. So um, in Tennessee, if you wanted to run for office as a Democrat, a Republican, or an independent, you need 25 signatures to get on the ballot. Right. If you want to run as Constitution Party or Green Party or Libertarian Party or Donald Trump Party or Kanye West Party or whatever else, you need 56,082 signatures. Um like I say, the, uh, up until 2020, there were only two states that were higher, and they were our two most populous states, Texas and California. Florida, which has almost three times the population of Tennessee, requires zero signatures. Most states are probably in the eight to 12,000 range. Mm -hmm. um, and, but regardless, the number was too high. Right. So yeah. you know, do you have, can you tell us exactly so I'm, I have two questions. My first question is, how does a how does it get to this point? How do we get to a point where it's literally enshrined in law that they need fifty six thousand plus votes? Or I'm sorry, signatures to get on the ballot. Like, how does it? And I don't mean just like the simple overview, like oh well, they voted it in. I mean like 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 who proposes this kind of stuff, and how does it get through? And then my next question is. Since it got there, and this really does, this would affect who is in office now. Well, maybe not. You know, the, the parties that are in office, at least. Mm. How? What are the chances of undoing it? Because it's very advantageous for those. Because the Libertarian Party and the Constitution Party, they're not there. They don't. They don't have a lot of presence. So. It, it would be disadvant it would be to the disadvantage of the Republicans and the Democrats to say, you know what, you're right. Fifty six thousand is way too many. We've got twenty five. I tell you what, we're gonna make it fifty for the other guys. Right? Like yes. I just I can't see where they would they would want to do that. Right. No, you're right. Um there is definitely a um number of legislators up there that are protectionist in that way. Mm -hmm. Um and but that's legitimately the only viable reason to have that law as it is, mm -hmm. is because you think the two parties should be protected against competition. Right. And nobody's constituents. I don't care who you are. There's no district in this state where the majority of constituents would agree with that statement. Right. Zero. And, and it would be overwhelmingly opposed to that sentiment. Um, but my understanding is there was a guy in the 60s or something that uh, had run for office like or run for governor like 20 times in a row and they were just sick of looking at his name so they changed the requirements that was the uh, originally the the story that i've gotten how much right. merit there is that i don't know um but as far as getting the bill done this bill 
was probably our biggest success, even though it, mm -hmm. it didn't get out of subcommittee. Um, what happened with this bill is we went into uh, subcommittee, eight person subcommittee with five confirmed yes votes mm -hmm. the day of the vote. We had, we, we confirmed ahead of time, we were going to win the vote five to three. Okay. Um, we got in there, our Republican sponsor uh, introduces the bill. Um, they deliberate on the bill for a moment. Okay. And uh, one of the Democrats speaks in opposition to the bill. You'll never believe what this man said in opposition to this bill because he told the truth. <laughs> He, he, I'm paraphrasing, but just barely. He literally looks at our sponsor and says, I don't think we should pass this bill because if we do, people might vote for those other parties and that would take votes away from my party and your party, Mr. Sponsor. Huh. I mean, there it is. And it's on video and we've got the statement and that's our advertisement for that bill this right. coming year. It's, right. a, it's a beautiful thing that happened yeah. last year, even though we got the, the vote killed okay right so it's always great vote, when they say the quiet part out loud right exactly exactly and that makes it that'll make a great advertisement you know um but at any rate again we had a 5-3 win they deliberate the bill while they're deliberating the bill one of our five yes votes gets up and walks out of the room yes it was 100 percent intentional um it leaves us with a 4-3 vote they call the vote and it's a voice vote so our four guys wearing masks say I, and the other three guys say nay. And the chairman slaps the gavel and says the nays have it. Oh, wow. And there's nothing we can do about it. We went and got in writing from the four. Our fifth came back in and recorded himself as a yes vote. He's technically the only yes vote on the record, comically enough. Huh. At any rate, uh, we went to the other four. We got in writing from the other four that they all voted in favor of the bill. We took it back to the chairman of the, uh, mm -hmm. the committee, asked him to reconsider the bill. And uh, we'll say he sternly told me no. Huh. <laughs> um, it had uh, some, some other pleasantries, right? There were some words for sure. Fair enough. This is but, yeah. um, you know, it happened. Um, but the reason I think that, that that bill is our biggest win is, A, because we've got that snippet where mm -hmm. that guy's telling the truth. And that is beautiful. We have the fact that last year we had the votes. We had it. We have it in writing. We can put that stuff out there again. Right. We had the votes uh, and we got screwed on it. Um, and on that particular bill, um, in my coalition building, trying to get other people to help me lobby and move and push in the right direction. I had a person that worked for the Republican Party that was elected by Republicans to serve the Republican Party, calling Republicans and lobbying them in support of this legislation. At the same time, I had the regional coordinator for the Democratic Socialists in Memphis calling Democrats and lobbying them to support the same piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. We had a person that worked for the Republicans and a person that worked for the democratic socialist pushing in the same direction on a piece of legislation. Hmm. That is what we want to do. Right. That's pretty interesting. So I, I've got another one that I'm, you, you got quite a few bills on here and I would love to talk about all of them. However, there are quite a few and we can only talk about a handful. So this one I find kind of interesting, and I'm reading it from the website here. It's mm -hmm. the one for reform eminent domain. It's HB 0793, um, yes, uh, Senate bill. Uh, so that's House bill for anybody that's uh, watching or listening. And then Senate bill SB 0680. And so here's what it says, just so to, just to give people an idea of what it says on, the, on uh, what I'm reading from here. Blighted, um, blighted. Properties are often condemned and taken through eminent domain. Current law allows well-kept properties in the area of a property, well-kept properties in the area of a property that has been designated as blighted to also be taken through eminent domain. 
The, the proposed bill will restrict this type of eminent domain seizure to only properties that have been designated as blighted. Yep. So kind of go ahead and uh, explain that to me. Like, I, I don't quite understand the, um, you have a blighted property and then that one can be seized. And then there are properties that are next to it that can be seized as well. Is that what I'm, I don't really understand how this works. Essentially, what what this has become is an excuse to use eminent domain in a situation where a depressed area mm -hmm. could generate more property tax dollars oh. if it is, you know, take seized through eminent domain, sold off to developers etc cetera, etc cetera. so yes in tennessee if you live in a neighborhood that's got a hundred houses in it and there's one house in the neighborhood that's deemed blighted they can use that as an excuse to use eminent domain in the whole neighborhood so they can use that as an excuse but do they go to that extreme and take 99 for one or i guess 100 for one it has been done um okay it, it, it's been attempted once um, a couple years back in Chattanooga, and there was such an outcry in the community that it ended up getting shot down. But they were going to take a bunch, I think it was like five or 600 homes, uh, and build soccer fields and a park and stuff like this. Right. So, um, yes, it's been done. It can be done. Um, the lobbyist for the homeowners i think not homeowners association um i can't remember what, who he was a lobbyist for that spoke in opposition to the bill mm -hmm. um and contended that they never use this that they never use this this uh, this loophole right but, but also we can't patch it up with correct legislation right so one of two things is not true <laughs> sure sure well i mean i mean even if you never use it right i mean the idea is that it's there and it can be used right and, right. and that's kind of the point is is like so i guess the argument would be okay you're saying that it's never been used so therefore there shouldn't be any problem in resolving this unless you want it to be potentially used in the future right Right. I mean, all this stems out of the Kelo case, uh, which was a Supreme Court case that went down I don't know, four or five years ago, I think is what it was, uh, when uh, I think it was in Massachusetts, but they took a whole bunch of houses and they were going to redevelop uh, or level it all and sell it to, I want to say Pfizer or Johnson and Johnson. It was some, it was some pharmaceutical company. Um, and they ended up, you know, running these people out of their houses. And then there was a big lawsuit about it and all that good stuff. And um, the people actually lost the lawsuit. Uh, Supreme Court said the government had the ability to do it, apparently. Right. Um, but in the wake of that, a lot of states tried to correct that mistake that the Supreme Court had made mm -hmm. and protect you know, the reality is, is you're protecting poor people that happen to own a piece of property. That's not worth a whole lot of money. Right. Um, I mean, that's who you're protecting. Right. Um, so um, again, you know, like the civil asset forfeiture thing or the ballot access thing, we can go into any district in this state and we can have this conversation about this at being a reality. And uh, overwhelmingly they're going to be on our team. It, right. it, I, Everything, everything we do is like that, though. Um, it makes it easy when you don't have, when you have a product that everybody wants, and that product that everybody wants in some way, shape, form, or fashion is freedom, rights, liberty. Right. You know, their individual agency. Right. Um, so it's just figuring out where the biggest piles of that are. Um, you know, the biggest groups of people we can get on that stuff, and that's, right. So I got one more question, then we'll then we'll talk about how people can help. And, and, and it's along the same line of this eminent domain. Um, and, and it's very, uh, yeah. 
I, I wish I could remember specifically what I watched, but I watched some documentary. It was on our past president, uh, President Trump, and I believe that he was in Ireland, and he wanted to develop a golf course. And they were showing in you know this this home that was kind of like in the way in some manner. I'm not sure exactly how it was in the way, but he basically was kind of dogging on the people, and it was like you know, you live in a dump, you know. And but this was somebody's home, like you just said, it's somebody's home, right? Um, so when they say blighted, what does it mean to be blighted? Because I think it's one of those terms that people think they know what it means. And then there's a legal definition that might shock them or right. maybe maybe for some not even go far enough. So what does it yeah, mean to be blighted? I, I think every state has At least in Tennessee for the varying country. definitions. Uh, but essentially, uh, a blighted property is a property that's deemed condemnable. Like okay. it should not be lived in. Okay. Cracks okay. in the foundation, holes in walls, okay. uh, wiring that is dangerous things okay. like that okay. um so we're talking genuinely dilapidated mm -hmm. you know, properties um but you know the idea that because your neighbor doesn't keep up his property the government is entitled to your property right is insane right un -American. and uh i think that we can get the legislature to see it like that right because even though it's you know even though we're talking unlivable you know uh, circumstances uh, i would oppose taking anybody's property for you know just because we deemed it unlivable um I, but i think that at least is a good start to say all right let's at least scale this back so that we're not taking you know like if we're going to use eminent domain let's use it in the most worst situation with the least amount of impact to the fewest number of people yep that's and, it you know and, and and that's you know i mean again for anybody watching because you know i'm libertarian and people you know might be like oh i can't believe you i i, I would i would object wholly to taking somebody's property but if we're there let's at least back it up you know and protect as many as we can and then later we can talk about maybe going a little bit further that's it so, so let's talk about how people can help, uh, you know, and, and, and you'd mentioned earlier that you're registered under, um, what was it, For All? Is that what it is? Incorporated, yes. For All correct. Incorporated, and that For All Tennessee is merely one chapter um, uh, out of hopefully in the future 50, all 50, right? Yeah. So how can people help move either ten the Tennessee chapter or the primary chapter or the primary organization? Well, I mean, we are a new organization, um, mm -hmm. to say the very least. And, you know, we have this idea of what our culture is going to be like, and it's going to be built around honesty and facts and not sensation, like intentionally not sensationalizing things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and um, even handedness and a willingness to work with anybody to do to move the ball in the right direction right. um and you know we need to develop that we need to put that on paper and all that good stuff but um we want to expand this um and in order to expand it i mean we we need to prove the model can work here in tennessee um we've got to develop a fundraising base uh, that can support employees. Um, currently, we're covering all of our tools. Um, we hit our goal uh, for uh, the, our first year um, in trying to develop the organization as the primary focus, like these issues and how we're going to run the website and you know, some of these culture things and not exactly trying to chase down um, um, dollars at this particular time. So, right. um, I mean, I haven't, I it, honestly, I haven't taken a paycheck in a year, okay. uh, for this organization. Uh, and I dropped a lot of my own personal savings in it. And I think that, you know, that willingness to have a little sacrifice, um, on your part with, you know, your posterity and your treasure in the mix, um, 
before you go out and ask other people's for theirs. So, um, you know, we, we want, we'd really like to get Tennessee functioning. So mm -hmm. maybe by the end of uh, uh, this year, uh, we can look at opening up new chapters. Maybe mm -hmm. it would be the year after, um, but helping us support the organization in its infancy is, is big. Um, I mean, imagine if we had an organization that was trying to work 15, 20 pieces of legislation every single year that gave you something back that the government had taken. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, we can, we can condition society to think differently about their elected representatives. We can condition, uh, uh, you know, the, these districts and these constituents to um, um, get used to getting together uh, and working together on issues and mm -hmm. pushing on their their legislator the way that they're supposed to uh, you know and everybody should be reaching out and talking to their legislator legislator and letting them know how they feel mm -hmm. um, if we don't do that we defer that to somebody else and that's right. why we are in the spot that we are in right so yeah, if if you want to see us grow, um, help us grow. I mean, if you've got resources, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe you um, are a policy expert in a particular area, and you would like to you, uh, let us use your knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, that's huge. Uh, connections to organizations that might be friendly with some of the stuff that we're doing. You know, we, we're reaching out to everybody we can reach out to. I've mm -hmm. talked to uh, Institute for Justice. I've talked to the Vera Institute. Um, we've talked to ACLU. I've talked to the American Conservative Union, Bitcoin Magazine, uh, Cato Institute. I mean, we need to develop these connections and develop these partnerships. And if you can help us do that, then that's helpful. Uh, and money. I mean, realistically, we need to be able to, uh, you know, pay employees. Right. I mean, it's really as simple as that. Right. No, <laughs> uh, I hear you. It'd be fantastic if we can pay, pay employees. But I mean, there's 6.6 6 million people in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if we, if we're pulling in, you know, we got a, two, 3,000 people giving us five bucks a month, 10, $15,000 a month. I mean, we can pay some employees that way. Right. Um, yeah. We just have to get the word out there. Um, so, um, yeah, I, 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 we would appreciate any help that anybody was willing to give us. Um, and the reality is there's so many different ways you can help. I couldn't even, I, there's no way I could come up with them all. Right. But So how do people find you or the organization? Oraltn.org. Uh, we're on the Book of Faces, uh, Instagram, um, uh, Twitter, and uh, we, we do a we get a lot of engagement on the social media. We put a lot of the stuff out there. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's where we've been uh, disseminating our issues, um, uh, along with you know emails to members and stuff. But uh, that's the way that we're going to keep people posted. And once session starts. You know, it's going to be conversations about, you know, these are the bills that we're working. Here are the ones that are moving through. Here are the legislators that are in support of it. Here are the ones that we need to, uh, to move on this issue. And, uh, you know, we're going to have weekly updates. I mean, it's going to be like you're there. All you have to do is pick up the phone or open the keyboard up and send an email. So. Right. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. I really appreciate you coming on and spending this hour, you know, talking about your organization. It sounds really neat. I, I like the fact that you got all these bills and you can, it's, it's pretty well laid out on your website. And we people, I mean, I, I encourage people to go to foralltn.org and check it out. It's, it, it's very, you know, well, it's, it's, it's laid out very nicely. It's, it's organized and it's very clear, you know, it's not like, you don't go there and you just pile of words and it's like it's kind of boring. Right. Like you can get right to it and you can see what it is that you're actually doing. You can check out some of the bills that you've been involved in, and uh, you can. I, I think there. I didn't. I didn't click on them, but I believe there's links to the actual bills. It looks like it yeah, that that's people correct. can read them if they're if they're so cool. inclined. Uh, I, I will sometimes on my show when I do a bill review. In fact, that's that's kind of how you and I got connected. 
and I had made a boast on Facebook and on Twitter mm-hmm. that uh, – that I, I read more bills. I'm trying to think of who it was that connected us. But I, w- I made a joke about how many bills that I had reviewed in my podcast. My podcast isn't very big, but I've, I've you know, done like, I'm, I'm coming up on, you know, 85 issues or issues, mm. 85 episodes. And I said something like, I've read and talked about like 26 bills or something like that. And then I joked and said, I've read more bills than, uh, uh, then, then probably a lot of members of Congress, and then you know, uh, and then somebody named Josiah he co- contacted yeah. me, and he was like, "Hey, man, you should, you should talk to, um, to for all Tennessee. You know, they're all about bills." And I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, let's let's see what happens." And yeah. uh, so here we are. So it was it was it was a neat little way about of you know us coming together. And I'm definitely going to be following you on Twitter and just kind of keep an eye out and see what's going on. And who knows, maybe if I, you know, when I do bill reviews, I review them um, just kind of sporadically, whatever I find that looks interesting. But if I see one for Tennessee, I'll try to remember you guys and, and tag you. And you can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on my on my understanding of the bill. Oh, I'd appreciate uh, that. It sounds so, like fun. Uh, but basically what I do is I just read the bill. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just, I just, I'm just yeah. a guy that likes to read. I read Same. the bill. And then I decide what's my opinion of it. It's usually not usually the bills that i'm reviewing i oppose uh mm. for very libertarian reasons uh, mm. there's been a few where i support and there are some where i'm like you know i really oppose this bill but here's a way that they could have written it that would have made it a little bit made me oppose it a little bit less mm. right because i do understand that where we are in society we have to have some laws and i think it's important that people get involved and I think organizations like yours help people, you know, give them a reason to get involved so that they yeah. maybe will check out the bills. They don't have to read the bills in full. I know that bills kind of suck when it's, when you're reading them and, you know, sometimes they're, 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 they're challenging. Um, but an organization like yours, I think, gives a little bit of purpose. Um, yeah, know, for we try to, we, we really are trying to make it as easy as you possibly can to be engaged. Right. Um, I mean, we try to lay these things out um, in a very simplistic way where you they're easy to under, understand the core issue and mm-hmm. the reason in the law and all that good stuff. If you right. look at the work that we did last year on, that's still on the website. Right. Um, and, and, and so I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like people with information are going to can make good decisions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do is just give them good and factual information and make it easy for them to do it. So I mentioned that report card earlier mm-hmm. uh, that we have. So what I'm wanting to do, we haven't gotten there yet, but what I'm wanting to do right now, if you go, you can pull up your legislature or legislator and you can see on each of our issues on a scale of one to five, where they stand from uh, hard no to hard yes and the stuff right. in between. Okay. Um, what I'm, what I want to get to, and I, we're not going to be able to get to it this year um, is to get to a place where a si- outside each one of those issues is a button that you can click and mm. it will send a form email to that legislator that says, we really appreciate you being with us on this issue or we really wish you would change your mind on this issue, right. whichever is necessary for it to, to be, you know, whatever should be corresponding to that particular legislator. Right. So um, we're going to try to make it easy. We're going to put the information out there. It's all going to be actionable. It's all going to be easy. We're going to tell you exactly what you need to do if you're wanting to push in the same direction that we are. Um, so, um, and another thing I haven't mentioned that I do think is very important and very different for our organization is um, most of these organizations in this space, and I apologize for getting back on my soapbox here a little bit. No, you're good. But most of the organizations in this space um, have a leadership team or a board or whatever that sits down and sets the agenda. And then they go out and they try to sell the agenda to everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and that's what they that's what how these nonprofits work um we do is we ask everybody what their opinion is and their opinion becomes our agenda Mm -hmm. but even more than that we go a step further because we realize that somebody that might really care about civil asset forfeiture and eminent domain may not be interested in their dollars going to qualified immunity okay so every single one of the issues that we will inevitably have on uh, for our agenda will have a separate drop down box when you go to donate mm-hmm. so whatever issues or combination of issues that you are you think are most important that's what you throw your extra resources in. Mm-hmm. And then that becomes money that we will use to send out mailers on that particular issue or pay an additional lobbyist to come in and help us out on that particular issue or mm-hmm. you know, set up uh, surveys in a particular district or whatever we need to do in order to advance that piece of legislation. Um, but we, we didn't want to put anybody in a position where their dollars went to something that they didn't want them to do, go to. Mm-hmm. So again, five bucks a month is membership. That's employees, that's overhead. Right. And then everything else we, we, we uh, that you would give us, we would hope that you would put, you would attach to the specific issues that you want right. to advance. That helps us know which ones are most important to the public or which ones are getting the most support or right. which ones deserve the focus. You know, um, so um, like I say, the organization is a very different organization. There's a lot of people that have been burned in the past by nonprofits. You give them money, mm-hmm. you do one thing, and then they turn around and do something you disagree with. And then you never want to give anybody money ever again. Right. We tried to address all those things, and we think we've done a pretty good job. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And again, go to foralltn.org. That's how you can find them. You can also find them on Facebook. Uh, look for All Tennessee, and you can find them there. I think I saw a Twitter account as well. That looks like it's For All TN as well on Twitter. And then uh, it's the same thing on Instagram as well. Same thing yes, as on Instagram, For All TN. Look them up. Get involved. Help them out. Donate. Spread the word. Whatever it is give them an assist because this sounds like a great organization and we need more organizations. But the first thing that we need to do is build this one. So that's what we got folks. Justin, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And then maybe we'll follow back up at, you know, sometime next year and we'll see how things are going. Anytime session starts in two weeks. If you want to hear the goings on, just let me know. All right. We'll do. I appreciate it. And for anybody that's watching or listening, uh, again, check them out and we're out for now. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.